Here in the pediatric emergency department, patients that require fluid resuscitation are those that have severe infections and may have sepsis, those that are in shock or a shock state, trauma patients who have significant blood loss, and then you know medical resuscitations or codes. I've taught a variety of different methods, whether that's pressure bags or a type of pump. We've done push-pull as well. Having the life flow to quickly infuse accurate fluid is so, so important. You know, the most common way to rehydrate a person is to place an IV and drain the liquid from the IV bag into the person over an hour or two. Sometimes that's not fast enough. Another technique we often use is a simple IV pump. They work effectively in giving fluids to patients, but they're actually slow. They can run at the maximum usually of a liter per hour, and we may often need to give a liter of fluid over five minutes time. One of our techniques is a pressure bag, and what that is is essentially this bag that puts a little bit of compression on the IV fluid leader bag, getting that fluid into the IV catheter. That works, but as soon as the pressure dissipates, the fluid flow slows down. It doesn't apply that much pressure, and in all honesty, if you're really worried, you end up at the bedside squeezing and squeezing and squeezing it in. Number two, it's hard to precisely measure the amount of fluid we administer. With a pressure bag, you squeeze, and then you have to deflate the bag to check and see how much fluid you've infused. With the life flow, you have 10 mLs every pull, and that is fast, and it's accurate, and it's easy to count. In the past, a patient who required significant fluid resuscitation in the pediatric emergency department, we would administer fluids by what was called a push and pull method. The nurse would have to pull off, so let's say, 10 cc's of fluid. They would then have to switch the valve and then push the fluids to the patient. That works, but it's actually quite a complex procedure to set up and manage. And it takes the focus of one medical provider, all of their time, to administer the fluid. And this obviously is tedious, and it kind of impairs your ability to rapidly infuse fluids. So the life flow can replace that technique and take the complexity out of it and make it much more intuitive. As a replacement for push and pull, I thought it was ingenious, a process that sometimes would take almost two nurses to do correctly. Um, can be done with one person and they still have a free hand, which is nice. Many large level one trauma centers have a machine called a rapid infuser, a piece of equipment that sits in the ER and is ready to deliver a significant volume of fluid or blood. In truth, we have spectacular technology in medicine. Unfortunately, a lot of it's very complicated. They're big, they're expensive, they're complicated to set up. It takes staff time to set it up and get it running. It takes a lot of education of staff to learn how to use it properly. And it takes the ability to place an IV catheter that is of enough size to work effectively. We have a rapid infuser um, that we could use if necessary, but now that we have LifeFlow, we actually can get that running in the patient much quicker. Not only is this device easy to use, but it's portable. I can take it to CT, ultrasound, we can even run to the OR with it without having bulky machines that we're trying to drag along behind us. Now that we have LifeFlow at our disposal, it's my number one go-to for rapid infusion. The beautiful simplicity is it does exactly exactly what we need and it's not super complicated. It's simple, it's easy, it's fast. You need something easy to put together, easy to work, easy to count, and that has absolutely been the LifeFlow device. For a product like this, once you've seen it, once you've used it, I can't think of any reason why you would not want to have this in your emergency department.